everyone, Sam here with WSOU 89.5 FM, your home for the loudest rock, and I'm here with Kyle from Wake. How are you doing? Good. How's, how are you doing? Pretty good. So for good those day. of you who don't know, Wake is a metal band from Calgary, Canada, and they're releasing a new album, Thought Form Descent, at the end of July. So before we talk a bit about the album, I know you guys just got off a tour, so how was that? Tour is great. It's always great. Uh, we were out with Origin, Misery Index for majority of that run they ended up bailing a little bit early they had to go home due to some personal matters but uh us and another band from uh the bay area uh wolf king oh that's awesome and you guys yeah. went all over the u.s and also canada right yeah we did about i think four dates in canada on this oh, run nice. yeah it's nice um, we don't usually hop over the border and go back and forth so it was nice to do that this time got fun. to hit like montreal quebec ottawa toronto a bunch of cool places Oh, that's awesome. I'm very curious. So what's the metal scene like in Canada? I'm assuming there is a scene if you guys are playing a lot in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. There's there's a great scene. I mean, Ottawa, that was the first time Wake has been to Ottawa, I think, since they, since we were first a band. So I had never been to Ottawa with Wake. Uh, that was cool. Toronto was cool. Montreal and Quebec are always fantastic for us. Like, always great. Uh, Calgary's always good to us. Like, the whole area we're from, Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon is great. Winnipeg's great. I'm. It's just it's awesome. <laughs> That's great to hear. Um, so talking more about your album, so Thought Form Descent. So you have one single out from the album now, um, Swallow the Light. Yes. So why did you choose to put out that single first from the album? That was a decision, I think, on our part, as well as the uh, the record labels. It was, uh, I think it was just the more accessible and one of the shorter songs on, okay. on the record. Yeah. Um, so your the album has a super interesting concept. Can you talk um, about that? Yeah, I uh, decided to kind of go outside of the box or well, to what I'm used to anyways and write a story uh, instead of basing it on my own personal things. Basically, it's about this character who finds himself at odds with waking life and through the means of, you know, uh, like uh, altered states and uh, meditation and um, lucid dreaming, he kind of finds that there could be a little bit more to life and out there and so he pursues that for better or worse that's kind of the main plot i kind of like i throw some of my own personal stuff in there but it's all drenched in allegory <laughs> you know do you think it's easier to write for uh, a story as opposed to your own life or yeah i mean like this is the first time i've done it and at first it was a little bit difficult just because i'd never done it i didn't know what i was kind of doing with mm -hmm. the story-based uh uh, record here but uh once it, it just started to flow a lot of the time I kind of fight with the lyrics because I'm like I don't know if I should be writing about this you know doing and saying certain things but uh I, I really enjoyed it that's awesome yeah um so do you have experiences lucid dreaming or is that also allegorical no it is I I have tons of sleep issues I'm actually a diagnosed parasomniac oh my gosh yeah, so I have just any kind of sleep disorder there is, I basically have it. Um, I suffered a lot over the years uh, with uh, sleep paralysis and night terrors. Um, lucid dreaming is something that I've been able to do a few times out of that, but it's it's very hard for me to do that. It's only happened a few times in my life. The sleep paralysis, on the other hand, <laughs> that's been plaguing me since I was like 10 years old. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah that sucks. I'm used to it now. And also, I mean, you used it to write, I guess you, some inspiration for the album too came from it. So yeah, exactly. Came a, bit. Right. a little silver lining, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So you guys release in 2020 an EP and an album. So how do you go from writing so much and continuing to write like another album after that? That was the pandemic. I mean, <laughs> Wake is Wake has always been a band that has always been writing. Like anytime we finish an album, we just get straight to writing. Um, once Devouring Rune came out, actually, so when that album came out in 2020, um, the borders had closed, I think it was five or seven days before we were supposed to meet up with Origin in uh, Texas for the start of a tour that was supposed to happen in 2020. It was like them beneath the masker and defeated sanity, I believe. And uh, so anyways, the borders closed, that record came out and it saw absolutely no tour. Like oh, we didn't play anything from that. We uh, we kind of like we had demo versions of those songs uh, that we played 
on tours leading up to that. Mm -hmm. But once that album was recorded, nobody had really heard us play those songs live. So once that happened, we kind of did the lockdown thing and, you know, didn't jam for, I think, a month or anything like that. But the boys were busy at home writing riffs and doing that. And then the Confluence EP, uh, that was like, all done in uh, isolation basically like those guys would get together and jam but they're on other sides of the room with their masks oh, on doing that whole thing. yeah and I actually I wasn't going to practice at that time I uh I, I just stayed at home and waited for the demos and got those and then I wrote those and then we went into the studio I think it was god early summer I want to say like June or something like that of 2020 and then and yeah then got those songs done and put that out that's crazy. I feel like it's it's great to hear that you guys stayed motivated and you guys kept writing throughout the pandemic. Because I know for I feel like for artists, it went one way or the other. Either you were writing a ton or you were writing like nothing. Yeah, it's kind of like not funny. It's, it's just strange to see some of the bands like just didn't even make it out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm maybe not so much on the international scope of things, but like locally, a lot of bands didn't make it out. It seemed like yeah unfortunately but yeah well, after, glad you guys did yeah <laughs> after the confluence ep there um i don't think it really took too long um we just started uh, the guys started writing songs for the thought form descent record and yeah pretty much the same thing we uh while we weren't in isolation the entire time we were kind of jamming all together in the same room mm. at that point but yeah that i think the writing for that took about six to eight months then we went to colorado to record with david Taro again and he's the master and <laughs> he did a great job. Yeah, that's awesome. It sounds great. So do you guys have anyone who you're particularly influenced by or any in specific influences for your new record? I don't even know. I mean, <laughs> our music tastes are so all over the place. Mm. Like, like I listen to a lot of post rock, like, I don't know, early cures, like my favorite stuff. Um, it's hard to really pinpoint, like all of our influencers are so over the map, but I think maybe that's what brings a lot of different aspects to the table when mm. we're writing as for like influences i just it's hard for me to pinpoint anything that is a direct influence mm. just everything oh, just a any kind of media music books movies all of it it's, it's all influence that's great well i know especially like it makes a lot of sense hearing that you have so many influences considering i know wake really tries to like push the boundaries mm -hmm. with what you guys do um but again how do you how did you did you guys kind of just I guess it's just all like you're saying embedding of personalities you guys don't kind of want to stay within the confines um, yeah. with your music yeah I mean that's I mean that's kind of the thing that's that's why we're always growing and ever changing mm -hmm. I guess I mean some bands you know it's totally cool some bands are happy you know writing two minute long songs for 25 years and you know what people love it and they love it and that's great um mm -hmm. wake though we're just we we we'll get bored too easy um you know we started out as a before before i was in the band uh like a, just a straight up grindcore band uh when i joined the band it was still pretty grind we did that for a couple of records and then Moving into Devouring Ruins saw, I guess Misery Right saw a lot more death metal influence going into the music. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was a lot more like post rocky sort of influence. And then influences from everywhere just came. I think like a lot of the time too, back when we were thinking like, oh, should we like change it up a bit and kind of, you know, not just write grindcore songs. We were a little bit like, well, what's that going to do to us? You know, is that just right. going to alienate anybody who loves us? And then we're just going to be hated. And we said, screw it. We took the risk and we, we just started writing music that we wanted to hear yeah, instead of trying awesome. to fit into a scene. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely feel like also it's, I mean, you really got to go for what, like what you guys want to do, because I feel like no, sometimes with fans, no matter what you do, no, not everyone's going to be happy. So you really have to go with like push with your passions. Yeah, I mean, at this point, too, uh, I think we're done alienating people mm -hmm. and people who like who, who are already fans of Wake know that we're just going to change. And I think they're just along for the ride at this point. Yeah, that's awesome. So I know you guys have. Um, so as soon as you release first day of your album release, your guys are going right on tour. So that's awesome. I bet you guys yep. are super excited for that. Yeah. And then yep. you're ending in your hometown. So it's like perfect tour, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be good. We haven't played Calgary. Well, it's. It's been a while now. It's been a while. We yeah, have that's... played since everything opened up again, but I mean, Calgary's home. It's always great to play here. I mm -hmm. love it. That's awesome. So do you have like an overall message you kind of want your listeners to take away from the new album or anything in mind specifically? No. And that was kind of the whole thing is like, there is no over, 
flatlining message or anything. Um, like, I hope people can read, like, enjoy the music as well as read the story and put it together and enjoy it as much as I, you know, enjoyed writing it. Mm. But as for an overall message I, or anything like that, I, I, I try to stay away from all that kind of stuff. Um, opinions, there's too many of them out there. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> So for on your tour, so since you guys did have go so long without touring, when you do perform, so obviously you have, um, you just went on tour, but even for the next one going into um, for your album release, are you planning on only playing the album? Are you planning on kind of like varying it? No, uh, like a lot of the time with when Wake writes a new album, we don't like we kind of hold on to songs from the album prior mm -hmm. and play new songs. And that's kind of what we've been doing on these last couple of tours that we did. We It's mostly... Uh, mostly thought form to send songs but there's also devouring rune and a song from confluence in there so okay, it's awesome. like this whole kind of last like two three years yeah it's like a whole culmination it's like new wake era culmination <laughs> yeah totally i mean some of those songs off devouring though uh there was the the first real song after the intro con Kana tavero that was the first song we wrote for that album and we mm. were playing that on the last year by the end of the last year oh my guys we got i can't do this song yeah. anymore <laughs> Like it's a it's a great song. It's just like we've been playing that every set for the last, geez, I don't know, four years, three years. Right. So, so you're sick of it. Uh, yeah. And I mean, even now it's like we're all stoked on Thought Form Descent, but now we're we're just we want to start writing again. <laughs> you oh, know, wow. the album is even out yet. <laughs> um, so do you have a favorite song to play live? I know you you seem to get is a little sick of <laughs> if it's a little um, too much, but I, well do you mean like just in general or mm -hmm. just like as a I mean I guess you could say for you singing or as a group like you just always every time you play you guys are always like you know I don't know because uh, like all of our favorite songs are so different from each mm -hmm. other's me personally uh Beyond Empyrean off the Confluence EP is one of my favorite songs to play I think it just translates really good live mm -hmm. uh people seem to really like and I have a blast singing that song it's it's got some of our heaviest stuff it's got some of the prettiest stuff you mm -hmm. know soft heavy it's got everything it's great that's awesome yeah. so um kind of like a um final question that we like to ask at WSU so if your band wasn't called Wake what do you think it would be called <laughs> oh geez I don't know <laughs> um kind of a deep more thought-provoking one <laughs> whack we'll just go with whack if we whack? Were, all right yeah. that's a good one <laughs> all right that's awesome well um before we end do you have any last thoughts comments you anything you want to plug before we go uh no just i uh, hope people check the record out hope people like it buy it show it to your friends show it to your mom your grandmother whoever all right well i'll be sure to do so thank you so much for yeah um, thanks for having me down with me today and yeah, good luck with everything. okay thank you you as well